Hello, my name is Derek Robbins from Tomcat Gas Training and welcome to part two of these videos on gas controls. So the next appliance we're going to be looking at are these. So these are fires. So let's have a look at the controls and the safety devices you will find on gas fires. Let's get on with it. Now the main control or the main safety device you're going to find on a, a modern gas fire is this here. Now all fires now have um, what's called ASDs, um, atmospheric sensor devices. It's also known as uh, an ODS which is uh, an oxygen depletion system. So it kind of has, has two words but the ASD is made up again of two parts. Uh, working off basically a thermocouple. So your thermoelectric device which we looked at in the cookers very closely uh, this is also what is controlling the flame supervision device, the FSD, on this fire. Okay. So this fire's safety devices are an ASD working with a thermoelectric. Okay. So it's FSD, it's flame supervision device, is an ASD working with a thermoelectric. Finally got there, okay. So, how does it work? So it works like a standard um, thermoelectric. Again, so if I light it, so I'm gonna press the knob down. So, cause I'm pressing the knob down here, you can see I'm pressing it down. I'm overriding the thermoelectric device. This is the thermoelectric device here, which is connected to the thermocouple. And the thermocouple is here. So this is the ignition. This is a thermocouple, and then we'll look at this part more closely. This is your ASD. So, as I press down the thermal uh, thermoelectric, I'm overriding the safety device. It now turns on to pilot. You now hear the ignition. So it'll click twice because it gives you two attempts. We're now going to hold it down for 10 seconds. So the thermoelectric device or the thermocouple creates that um, 12 to 30 millivolts DC which then holds open the thermoelectric device which will then allow the gas to these two burners okay so I can now spin the knob and all four radiants will now heat so this is what we call a duplex burner so there's two burners here so basically what one of these injectors does is put gas to the middle two and the other injector puts gas to the end two radiants. So basically you can either have it on low and high. That's how this one works on low and high through a duplex burner. Anyway, so what this has done now, it's heated the pilot flame, it's heated the thermocouple, the, heat, the thermocouple's created that electric. We've then pressed down the um, thermoelectric. It's now keeping the magnet, thermoelectric magnet on. So it's allowing the gas through to the burner. We've now turned the knob, which has now allowed the gas to come through. Okay, so if I blow this thermo, uh, this pilot light out, the thermoelectric again, well the thermocouple will cool down, cease making the electric and the thermoelectric, uh, the thermoelectric device will knock out, as it did on the hobs. But on this one, even though we now say everyone's 60 seconds, in the manufacturer's instructions for this one, it's 180 seconds. So let's do that test first. Let's blow out the pilot flame. Let's put it on to pilot, otherwise it'll just keep relighting. So I've just got it on pilot now. I'm now gonna blow it out and we'll time how long it takes for it to knock out. Are we ready? Yeah, that click then about 23 25 seconds so there are thereabouts we'll put a timer on we'll see what it actually came out on so it's well within that 180 seconds okay which the manufacturer said way back okay now that's the first part of this safety device so if the gas ran out it would knock off the flame but the ASD part of it is so this is basically made up here of two parts. So when I light it, it's 
Okay. Now you can see it's actually burning in two directions. This is called a ribbon burner. Okay, so basically the gas is coming through this pipe here into here. Okay, this is a lint arrestor here, and this lint arrestor is protecting the air relief inside the air hole inside here where the pre air comes in for combustion to mix with the gas to make the pilot flame. So, this is your pre air, this is your post air. So, it's now bending and bend in towards the burner, but it's also burning horizontally into the tip of the thermoelectric so the top seven mil or so in there okay so it's probably less than that now then if i drop down the lint arrestor there is a hole where the air comes in if i block that hole off you can see we've now got incomplete combustion and the flame has actually lifted off the thermocouple so what can happen in this situation now is the thermocouple will cool down that will then knock off the gas going to the pilot, okay? Now, this normally does take about 180 seconds and by that time, my finger's fallen off. So, let's just see how long it actually does take to knock off. That is how you test the ASD, okay, through the lint arrestor. So that's basically the safety devices we have on this fire. Now let's check the safety devices for this inset live fuel effect fire. Let's see what the differences are between this fire and the radiant fire we just looked at. Now, again, you can see this type of fire has another ribbon burner. So this has an ASD. So if it has this ribbon burner here, like we saw on the radiant fire, then it will have an ASD. Without that ribbon burner, it can't have an ASD, okay? So again, you can see it's going into the thermocouple. Okie dokie. So this time, the knob here, that's off. When we press it here in, we need to press it in again. And then we need to press the ignition, so you can see it's sparking there across the igniter and across the thermocouple. Then once it's lit, we can then turn it to large flame and small flame. Okay, so again, if we flip it over, you can see thermoelectric device here you can see, again, the gas valve is directly in line with the thermoelectric. Again, you can see the thermocouple lead. This is your ignition. So this is a, a manual ignition. Some fires have, when you press the knob down, it automatically ignites and twists like it did on the radiant fire. So again, this is our inlet side for the gas. This is then going off to the burner. And you can see then that's where the pipe goes to the burner. So this has got this, exactly the same device as the Radiant Fire, even though this is an inset live fuel effect fire. Okay, now there are some inset ones which have the controls on the side here, but again, they work exactly the same way as this one does and the Radiant Fire. So basically, the safety controls we've got on here on any gas fire really are the thermoelectric from the thermocouple and the ASD, the atmospheric sensing device and the controls it has are the control knob and that's pretty much what you get on this fire so let's have the look at the last fire which is a fan assisted fire now this is a fan flued um, gas fire so the firebox itself pretty much looks the same as any um, open flued inset live fuel effect fire. So it's a couple of differences. First one is, it's got a plug connected to it. Okay, so I'll plug this in. 
The next thing it is, it has this box on the back. So this is the cover, what you would see on the outside wall, so there's no chimney needed. And if you look inside this more closely, you will see that it's actually the fan off a boiler. Okay, there's also an air pressure switch in there. So they're new controls, when we'll look at those controls when we um, look at the boilers. So inside here there is a, an air pressure switch and a fan. Here we have a, a little control box. So when I press this control box to on, the light comes on and the fan opens up and starts to run. Okay. Now, what that activates is, actually on the fire, this is a solenoid valve, okay? So it's using electricity, an electric solenoid valve, to open and close the, uh, the, the gas. Now the reason why it has an air pressure switch in there is because <coughs> it's fan flue. And the fire and the flue are connected with this pipe. So without the air pressure switch, the actual fire wouldn't know the fan's running. So the air pressure switch is the safety device, okay? So that's telling the little PCB inside this control box here that the fan is running. And because the fan is running, the fire can then go into its sequence of operation. The fire itself is lights just like a normal live inset fuel effect fire and it has an ASD a thermoelectric device built into it but it just has this solenoid valve to open and close the gas if the fan is not on. So you need to turn the fan on first then you can light the pilot light then you can turn it on and if anything happens with the fan operates that solenoid valve and turns off the gas supply. Let's have a look at this solenoid valve more closely. So this is a solenoid valve. So basically a solenoid valve is an electrically operated on off valve. So an electric current passed through a coil, so this is where the electric current comes through here, and this is the coil here, um, it produces a magnetic field. And an armature, which has a valve attached in place inside this coil, when the coil is energised, the armature is drawn up the coil and the valve is lifted off its seating. Now this can either be AC or DC in here. Now this is actually an AC coil. Biggest problem we have with AC coils is they get incredibly hot and they can shatter. Whereas DC coil, because the voltage is lower, is less gives off less heat on the top here and doesn't make any kind of vibrating noise. So, let's get these bolts undone and let's have a look inside here so we can see how it works. Now you can see I've removed the bolts from around the flange. So if we take the coil off the top, you can see this part here is the armature. Now what happens is the armature gets sucked up by the electric. Okay, now on a lot of uh, these, the, the spring there's a spring here okay so most solenoid valves have a spring so when it does get sucked up it, it puts pressure on it and then as the electric is broken uh, the, it, it, the spring then returns it back so it gets sucked up and it's pushing against the spring the power is caught then the spring then pushes it back into place but this one's slightly different because what the spring is so if I can get this attached back to where it goes, so that goes there. On this one, the spring is at this end. Okay, so it gets sucked up like that and helps to pull the diaphragm up. Okay, so this diaphragm gets pulled up by the spring, okay, being held together. The gas then comes in through here and has to go down here to be able to come out of this pit here where it says out. So you can see this is the seat here, which seats on this, this is raised, I don't know if you can see that, but it's actually a raised face there. So that washer, this rubber washer is sitting inside here. So when you turn the power on, it pulls up. And if you look here, I don't know whether you can see, there's a hole all the way through it. So that does differential in the pressure. So as this pulls up, there is a, 
another rubber washer there so the spring stays attached pulls it up opens the valve there which helps differential the pressure then the gas can go down so this is how this solenoid valve works now this solenoid valve we use here on our um, emergency stop buttons but the ones you would probably find in a in a boiler would have a spring in the end here which when it gets sucked up okay the power gets energized when the power is de-energized the spring overcomes and pushes it back this is what we call a normally closed valve and there are also normally open ones okay when you normally open the normally open ones this the when you put the power onto the coil it closes the valve rather than opening it so that's a, a look inside this ac solenoid valve now that is the end of this video on controls on gas fires uh, next video we're going to be looking at is controls on boilers so look out for that one but if you've liked this video why don't you give us that thumbs up or leave a constructive comment down below if you've not subscribed to our YouTube channel yet, then get subscribing. And don't forget to hit that notification bell, because we release new videos every Wednesday. All I've got left to say is, thanks for listening, thanks for watching, and tune in next Wednesday for the controls for gas boilers. Cheers guys.